head. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining us this evening. I am Sri Sundaram, uh, the Tiedemann Cotton Dean for the K Tiedemann School of Business and Finance. And it is absolutely my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you on behalf of the University of South Florida. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, as we get started, I want to make sure I recognize a few individuals before we get started here. Um, I know we have uh, you know, Kate Tiedemann and Ellen Cotton. I know they're going to be joining by phone. Uh, Kate and Ellen, if you're there, please say hello. They may be running a little bit late. Um, and I know we have trustee Les Muma and Pam Muma joining us also today. Uh, Pam and Les, if you're there, you know, very uh, good evening. Can you just say a quick hello for us? I think we have a few people running a little late today. So I'm also going to recognize uh, trustee Stephanie Goforth and campus board member Debbie Sumbler. Uh, they're also be joining us and many members of the community, uh, community members as well as our uh, donors that are going to be joining us this evening. You know, the purpose of this uh, Bulls business brief was really to kind of uh, provide an opportunity after our consolidation into one uh, USF uh, post July 1st, 2020. Uh, we wanted to just have a conversation with you to give you an idea and update about how the campus is doing here in St. Pete. Also with regard to the Muma College of Business, now that is across all three campuses. Um, so we have, uh, you know, you know, you know Regional Chancellor Dr. Tadlock, as well as the Limpa Panjadeen Moas Lomayam joining us in a few minutes and providing us a, a, a brief remarks. Um, but the whole idea is to have a conversation and uh, uh, so we're not going to have a heavy presentation today, but more talking a little bit about the updates and then open up for a Q&A. That's the format we're planning to have. Um, and as a protocol, just want to let you all know, um, uh, please feel free to put in your questions uh, in, uh, in the form of chat. We have uh, uh, Sam and, and Lori monitoring the chat, so any questions you have, they can pass it on. So we're able to ask those questions of uh, you know both Moas and Martin. So with that said, um, again, I wanted to welcome everybody. Well, we'll get started off with uh, uh, Regional Chancellor Dr. Martin Tadlock providing some remarks about um, the post consolidation about the St. Pete campus. Uh, Martin, you want to take it away? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Shri. You know, it's it's really just a, a remarkable experience to participate in a college of business and a school of business and finance and two deans that have been absolutely wonderful partners um, to create the consolidation model of the College of Business um, it was just phenomenal from the very beginning. They're easy to work with, and I'm not being flattering because they're on here. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. They are easy to work with. They're fun to work with. Um, they're very skilled at what they do, and it's been a pleasure to work with them throughout this process of consolidation. They're just two highly cooperative individuals who really represent, you know, the best of USF, and I really applaud both of them for everything that they're doing. Just to give you a little bit of an update about the USF St. Petersburg um, campus and what's happening here, you know, with consolidation comes an opportunity for our students to really benefit from being able to take courses across the University of South Florida in a variety of formats. Uh, COVID, of course, pushed us <laughs> into many more varieties of uh, delivery than we had anticipated, but they already, these students already had that opportunity to begin taking courses anywhere anyway. And now that we have moved into several different modes of delivery, there isn't a student anywhere in the USF that can't find a way to access the coursework they need to really stay on track and complete a degree program in a very short period of time to save them money, to save them time uh, in college, to get into the world of work and into their career. And the College of Business has been one of the exceptional leaders in this endeavor because um, their faculty have been very innovative in creating those models for students to be able to complete their courses anywhere in a very timely way. 
Um, the profile of our students now is, of course, one profile throughout the USF. We have incredible, uh, incredibly talented students coming into this university. The highest um, SAT, SA, SAT, ACT, GPA profile students in the history of this university now across all three campuses. So we are attracting the talent that we need. Um, in terms of just a few other things, COVID-19, um, we're talking about the USF St. Petersburg campus right now, and I can tell you that you can count on one hand the number of students that we have on this campus who have needed to go into a quarantine situation. We've been very fortunate that our students, and there's a little over 300 students in residence, now we wish there were 975 in residence, which we have the capacity for, but there's over 300 who chose to come in residence on this campus. And those students have absolutely followed the protocols and the requirements to protect each other, to protect those here on this campus and in our community. And so we've been very fortunate that we've had no issues, in my opinion, with COVID. Um, an infection rate on this campus. It's been very safe and our students continue to just be amazing in the things that they do to support that. Uh, the, uh, just today, I, I go outside a little bit every now and then when I can grab a time away from the computer and I go out onto the deck between this building and the library uh, where I can grab a, a quick lunch or a bite. And I watch students, uh, a few of those students who come through from Harbor Hall or the library or coming into this building. And they're outside, but they're all masked up and they're doing what they need to do. And even when they're walking uh, alone, the students are masked up. And I've been really amazed by that because of course uh, the requirement is if you can't socially distance, you need to do that when you're outside. But if you're by yourself, uh, you don't have to have that on. But I've, I've been just amazed by that going over to the student center uh, periodically during the lunch times just so I can get to see students and say hello. Uh, same thing, they've been following the protocols, they're spread, they're keeping their distance. Um, when they're together, they are masked up and being very careful with what they do. It's been just a pleasure to see how well our students have handled this, which results, of course, in a very safe environment on this campus. And just three program highlights for you that I do want to share that I think are, are very distinctively different here on this campus. We have a very close working relationship with St. Petersburg College, which is our primary feeder for transfer students. It also provides a way for those students who don't typically have um, or don't have the credentials to immediately come in right out of high school an alternative pathway. So we have a program called PATH, Pinellas Access to Higher Education, and we have FUSE. Now FUSE is a seamless transfer program where you start at St. Pete College, you earn your associate's degree in one of 19 different majors that are seamless transfer and guaranteed admittance to this campus or this university or to USF in general as a whole. PATH, Pinellas Access to Higher Education, is a, an alternative that doesn't require a certain major. It's open to any major that the student wants to pursue at St. Pete College. It comes with an initial scholarship to encourage them to make that transfer and come over here when they've completed their program at SBC. And it's kind of like a dual enrollment program. We work with them, they work with us all the way through the time they're at SPC. And we have, after just one year of launching that program, we have over 76 students at St. Pete College that have identified the plan to come to this campus. And a lot of those students come into the business college and the business school here with that intention. We also started um, a year ago a program called the Innovation Scholars, which is a mentoring program for brand new freshmen, brand new first year in college students coming right out of high school, 17 and 18 year olds who you know, our fresh faced um, coming out of high school students thinking they're ready to go at this thing and getting engaged and learn everything they need to do to move forward in their career. We set up a mentoring program in 
partnership with the Innovation District of St. Petersburg, helping do this. Um, we started with 35 students last fall who received mentoring opportunities with organizations in downtown St. Petersburg. So it's walkable, it's trolleyable, it's scooterable, it's bicycleable, whatever you want to call it. So it's closed so they can go and they receive that mentoring on site on location with those organizations that they participate with. This year we expanded it. At one time we had over a hundred new freshmen wanting to participate, but then the choices were made by those students on whether they would come in residence or not. So um, we, we lost some of those, but we're, we're still over 70 students this fall started in the Innovation Scholars Program and are being mentored by over 60 different organizations, individuals in those organizations in the downtown of St. Petersburg. A lot of those students, again, are business oriented and planning to pursue their career in a business field. And we're hoping, of course, to continue to grow that so that almost, we hope, <laughs> any new student coming into this campus in this location have that opportunity to receive that mentoring and we're extending it into a second year so they continue to get professional development opportunities and career development opportunities in that second year which we hope of course leads to internship opportunities in their third and fourth year the last thing i, I wanted to share with you of course is the osprey hall is our new residential facility across the street from the Kate Tiedemann School of Business and Finance. Um, and it is um, fabulous. It, it, it has million dollar views, which I'm jealous of. <laughs> Some of the views are better than Sri Sundaram has from his dean's office, <laughs> just saying. Um, and a full dining facility that will open in January in the bottom of that facility. And we are creating learning communities inside that facility and we're looking for sponsors who are willing to step up and help us create those learning communities. For example, we've talked about a learning community and entrepreneurship for students who are very interested in business startups and starting their own businesses. They could come there, they could live there, they could be mentored by professors that we have available to them and they would work together, live together, and be a part of developing their own businesses while they're here going to school. And it would be a learning community created in that facility for those students. So we're really excited about those kind of things. And the friends of the college and the friends of the Kate Tiedemann School of Business and Finance, uh, you are those friends. <laughs> you are critical, absolutely critical to the directions, the direction we can take. I mean, we can't do this without um, without your help. We can't do those learning communities. We can't provide scholarship opportunities for these students. We can't attract that talent here to really be maintain that national position that we currently have and even go higher, of course, which is always something we strive for. I've heard Moez say it. I've heard Shri say it. I absolutely support that. So we do have, of course, budget challenges because of COVID. Um, which has impacted enrollment, impacted occupancy of our dormitories, our residence halls, and uh, we have to address those and we have to look at how we're going to strategically reinvest in the University of South Florida on all of the campuses to move the university ahead and achieve those goals that our Board of Trustees has set for us, which is to maintain and sustain preeminence to become eligible for the for membership in the American Association of Universities, which is a highly prestigious group of universities in the US and Canada, and to continue to lead forward into the top 25 rankings in US News and World Report, which we are on that trajectory for. So I, I wanted to share those things with you and thank you again for being here. I'm really really pleased that some of you were able to join us for this and I thank Moez and Shri for putting this together and that opportunity to to have that uh, chance to see you here tonight and I think do I turn this over to Moez now is yes, that correct? Um, thank you Martin and uh, now I want to you know welcome uh, my colleague and good friend uh, the Lim Pippin Jadeen Moez Lamayam. 
Thank you so much, uh, Sri. Thank you so much, uh, Martin. Uh, what a pleasure. Uh, what a, just, uh, we're so excited to welcome and speak to so many friends of, uh, of the MUMA Kanjo business, of the uh, KT Demon uh, School of Business and Finance. I think uh, Martin said it so nicely. You are it. Uh, we are where you we are now and 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 as one of the fastest uh, raising and and uh, growing college of business and university because of your help and and support uh, let me tell you um, um i will not, i'll be lying to you if uh, uh, if i don't tell you i was nervous about the 1st of july uh, 1st of July, that was the date that uh, we waited for for so long. That was the date uh, so well characterized by so many where um, uh, the change at USF that happened is the most profound change in the history of, uh, of USF. So um, the 1st of July came and I'm so happy it, it went very smooth. Uh, that date we will never forget in our careers. That's the date that we said goodbye to um, us and them. That's the, 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 the date where we uh, became one team. That's the date where um, we redefined math. And uh, we don't say that one plus one plus one is three anymore. Tampa plus St. Pete plus Aristotle Amenity is not three anymore. It is five. Yes, don't tell that to our students. They get confused with the math, but that's synergy. That's really synergy redefining what we can do together. Um, uh, I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to be working with the Sri and Martin. They have been absolutely fabulous. They made our job much easier in uh, serving as a model for the university for consolidation, but also uh, nationwide. We, we receive now calls because a lot of colleagues across the country are going through similar exercises and they're coming to us for advice on how we did it um, as smoothly as, uh, as we did. This date is very important for our students because starting the 1st of July 2020, students can take any courses from any campus. They have access to many more choices, many more electives, many more majors, all at the um, preeminence um, uh, quality with the same standards. Um, uh, also, um, 1st of July, uh, students will, um, uh, will have the opportunity to move around and have access to um, outside the classroom programs on the three campuses. Uh, so the feedback we've been getting from students is have been very, very positive, despite the very difficult times uh, by uh, COVID-19. Also, um, 1st of uh, July, um, hopefully we uh, put an end to the uh, some of the confusions that many employers had. You know, w what is the difference uh, between hiring somebody in accounting in Sarasota and St. Pete or in Tampa or in finance or any? Guess what? There is no more difference. They're all the same degree, one degree, the MUMA College of Business degree that is from preeminent university. I remember when we became um, a preeminent university a little bit more than two years ago. I was in a in a function um, downtown and, and of course bragging about USF and um, how excited we were and, and one um, uh, parent came to me uh, his daughter was in, in St. Pete and said, oh, great. So my daughter in St. Pete uh, would be uh, would, would have her degree from a preeminent uh, university. I, I, I cannot tell you um, um, the disappointment at that time uh, I had um, to tell uh, this uh, this parent that I'm so sorry, it was just, just Tampa who was preeminent. He was extremely disappointed. My heart was broken. But guess what? No more. Everyone from uh, St. Pete, from Sarasota MNT campus, from Tampa, every one of our students will have their um, degree from a preeminent university because we are one preeminent universities. Uh, employers have hopefully uh, more better students, more diverse uh, graduate to select from and, and interns. Um, so, you know, also, have we figured out every single details? Absolutely not. We think of consolidation as a journey, but we are committed to you, our friends, supporters, community members, that we will do everything we can. We will always assess 
and make adjustments when adjustment unnecessary. Um, our commitment to our community, our commitment to our students, our commitment to our faculty and staff that post consolidation, everyone will be better off than pre consolidation. Um, there is no doubt and everyone knows that we're going through difficult financial times uh, now at USF and at the state of Florida, and this is the same for every for this is the same for every single university out there um, in the world for that matter, probably every organization. But uh, let me tell you, being consolidated makes that pain less uh, significant because now we have more resource. We can work together and put our um, um, uh, brains and resources together to face the um, the adversity of the difficult financial times. I uh, talking about the difficult financial times. We cannot say enough to our um, donors and our friends. I hope uh, uh, Kate uh, Tiedemann and Alan Cotton have joined us. Thank you so much for uh, your support uh, now uh, because of uh, Kate and Alan. Uh, Sri is the uh, uh, Kate and Alan uh, um, Dean of the uh, um, Kate Tiedemann um, uh, School of Business and Finance. We also post consolidations. We have the uh, uh, Kate Tiedemann and Alan Cotton uh, professorship in finance, and that's really a great uh, testament that uh, uh, we are on the right track and your support is so important for us. And the same thing for uh, Les and Pam and uh, Muma. I hope they're joining us. Uh, Thank you for uh, for uh, your friendship, your support for our um, college across three campuses. I know you're um, you're you're excited about consolidations, and with Martin, Sri, and everyone, we are committed uh, to you to work really hard to make sure that uh, you see the best return investment not on one campus but on three campuses because we are changing the lives of our students across three campuses. You are helping us change the three lives and, and of course uh, our good friend Lynn Pippinger cannot be with us uh, tonight but I cannot tell you how, um, how honored, excited for me to be the very first holder of the um, Lynn Pippinger, Deanship of the Muma College of Business. It makes for a long introduction when I do it, but it is the best introduction and I always say it. I am the Lynn Pippinger, Dean of the Muma College of Business, home of the KT Demon School of Business and Finance. It's long, but sounds so good and I can never get tired of saying it and I will repeat it every time. Thank you everyone for being with us tonight and uh, for all you do to support us, to help us. I think um, our vice chair of the board, Stephanie Goford, if you're here, thank you for all you do. Same thing for uh, our friend Debbie Sambler, member of the board and former trustee. Thank you for everything, but, but more importantly, everyone who was here, despite the uh, parade, the lightning parade for you to be here. I understand the big and the huge sacrifice and uh, we love to hear your questions uh, and uh, let's open it up uh, Lori for questions. Yes, and as, as Lori uh, looks at it, I have a couple of questions. I'm going to get started, Lori, so that gives you a little bit of time. Uh, and for folks, as we have talked about, please make sure uh, any questions you have, if you can put it in the chat, uh, Lori and Sam are going to be uh, managing and Lori will be asking those questions. So. Uh, why don't I start off, you know, Martin, for, you know, really from a campus perspective, um, you know, uh, I'm looking, uh, reflecting back for both of us, we came at the same time. This is our fifth year here. Um, and it's, uh, as we look at the community and how much we've been involved with this, one of the questions have uh, has always been what opportunities consolidation brings, not only from a business, uh, a college of business perspective, but as you look at the broader campus, what are some opportunities you see about new programming and a partnership that we're able to build uh, through this consolidation into one USF, uh, Martin? Well, you know, when we first came, Sri, we um, we put together what's called a master academic plan for this campus. Um, and then the very, that was in the, I think the fall of the first year here. And very shortly thereafter, which I think was the spring of that same academic year, um, Ralph Wilcox, the provost, asked that we work with them on developing a strategic plan, a uh, master academic plan for the entire USF, all three universities in the USF quote system. 
and we had uh, got we went through a large amount of time looking at the needed degree programs being off that needed to be offered on all three uh, at all three universities back then. Um, that plan's still there. It's been updated. It's um, still available. We still have programs on our list that we would like to see delivered here, academic programs delivered here. At that time, however, we were three separate universities. So to put forward a new program request, there's a thing called unnecessary duplication, um, which would sometimes, many times, prevent us developing academic programs here that were already offered in Tampa or in Sarasota, and the Board of Governors would never approve that because it's unnecessary duplication. You can go get it there. Um, now that we're one USF, that master academic plan really represents the entirety of the University of South Florida and new academic programs that can, well, not new, but the academic programs that we had on our master academic plan that we wanted to see here can now be brought here uh, from Sarasota Manatee or from the University of South Florida Tampa campus. Those programs can be brought here if the resources are provided to assist the deans in bringing those programs here, if the needs still exist here, if all of that information that we put together four years ago about the uh, the need that has been updated along the way still exists. It's a lot easier now because we already have the program within USF. It's just a matter of where are you going to deliver the program. I think that's a huge change uh, for us as soon as we have the resources uh, to be able to do this and help the deans deliver those programs. We make a case for it. We need it in St. Pete. We can get those programs delivered here. And you have an example of nursing, if I yeah, which you already have brought it over here, right? Nursing um, was already brought. Uh -huh. We supplied the facility and the college provides the instruction and the courses, but it's delivered here in St. Petersburg. It's a second degree accelerated nursing program. We've been talking with Sarasota for a while about, of course, the hospitality leadership management program coming here as well and other programs that we don't currently offer here, but there definitely is a need and a demand for those programs to be offered locally. Thank you. You know, Moas, it feels like it's almost a little over a year ago, we started the first, um, I think, uh, visit to each of the campuses with all the three deans. Uh, it feels so long ago, but I think, uh, you know, it was a, a great successful way. Thanks for your leadership in, in, in moving in the direction and being a leader on helping us uh, think about I, I still remember the saying, it said, hey, Shri, if we don't make a plan for ourselves, we will be given a plan <laughs> that you, we may not like. So I still remember that, uh, you know, and, and I think we've come a long way and I feel like now we even before July 1st, we've been fully integrated. As you look at again, the same question, some of the opportunities like the Bishop Center, where we were able to get a faculty from Tony Kong uh, that is helping us support. What are the opportunities you see with this consolidation uh, as we move forward? Thank you, Sri, and and really, um, uh, the merit goes uh, to the team, and you're uh, an amazing part of the team, as uh, Martin and and everyone, uh, faculty and staff, who really believed in this consolidation and trusted us, uh, despite um, a lot of uh, let's face it, uh, a, a history and and some uh, uh, bad experiences that some might have um, uh, with with prior when we were consolidated uh, before. Um, um, Regarding the opportunities, I can tell you sky is the limit, really sky. And, and I was very serious about the one plus one plus one equals three. One of our biggest problems in Tampa was a very constraints bandwidth in, 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 in faculty and what we can do. Now we have more possibilities, more expertise. You know, the Bishop uh, Center for Ethical Leadership is a great example. Uh, it was one um, just in St. Pete. Now it is uh, serving the entire community across the uh, Tampa Bay areas to serve as a hub of excellence for what does it really mean to be an ethical leader and how can we help companies um, um, uh, endorse and, and follow ethical leadership and be truly a hub of excellence. Um, I think as Martin said, now we can think of adding more 
incredible majors to uh, uh, St. Pete and other campuses. You know, uh, uh, Martin mentioned, uh, for example, the um, hospitality and tourism um, um, management. We can, you know, personal financial planning. We know, for example, St. Pete is a hub of uh, 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 for for the wealth management industry. Now we can train future generation for pro, uh, financial advisors and financial planners. The same thing for the insurance industry. We're building a, a great school in risk management and insurance that hopefully will also uh, uh, give majors and, 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 and offer majors and classes in St. Pete and Tampa. Now it is host, hosted in um, uh, Sarasota Manatee. So uh, I just very exciting and, and sky is the limit what we can do together. Thank you and Laurie, I'm going to pass it on to you for the questions you may have for uh, for both Martin and, and, and uh, you know, Moes are, are for me, so. Okay, well, the first three or four here are all related to students, which is a good thing to see. The first couple of questions are, are asking actually how they're doing right now. How are our students reacting and performing with virtual class delivery? Are they seeing an increase in need for tuition support since the pandemic began? So can you talk a little bit about how the students are handling this current semester? Um, I can take a step if uh, if you want me to um, uh, quickly. Um, uh, let's face it and, and be very honest. Students are going through very difficult times through this crisis. Uh, uh, you know, many lost their part time jobs. Uh, many uh, also lost uh, internships that uh, either could have helped them made a little bit of uh, money um, in the summer or uh, also get the experience. And even some of the graduates had their offers rescinded. So uh, some of them have their parents lose their job. So um, I think um, it is uh, important to recognize that they are going through difficult times, but uh, uh, they, are part, they are bulls and, and, and uh, the, the key word there is resilience. And I'm just so impressed by the, but the extent to which they adapted to the remote instruction, to the new technologies. Um, it was not easy in the beginning. And when we moved in, in March uh, on a very short notice to remote instruction, we had to struggle many things, but our faculty and staff answered the call and our students answered the call. I'm really happy to see that they are now uh, making progress toward their uh, degree and their uh, graduation. We're trying, we're doing everything we can uh, to also um, give them um, very similar experience of outside the classroom. Um, professional development, uh, information sessions with employers, internships that are virtual. Um, I cannot thank enough. Also, uh, many of our donors, many of them are right here with us this evening who contributed to the fund that helped uh, hundreds and thousands of our students uh, financially. And I can add just a couple of things too, Moes. Please, Thanks. Please. Um, the students here um, on this campus as you know, by far the, the vast majority work. Um, they have part and full time jobs in downtown St. Pete for the most part, except for our commuters. But the ones in residence uh, typically work here on campus and downtown. And the support that we received from people who stepped up to help supply our food pantry, which quadrupled the number of students that it served during the summer um, as a result of student need and needs of uh, their families, of course, too. And financial help that really plugged the hole for some of those students that simply didn't have a job anymore, like Moes said, didn't have or, or had a family member that had lost a job. It was able, it kept those students moving in their degree program. Um, COVID money that we got, some CARES Act money that went to students also helped, of course, but uh, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, we really know that uh, we have students with financial needs that are different than what they had a year ago. Um, but we we do see that, like Mo has said, the resilience. I'm, I'm watching monitoring social media. <laughs> we, we're monitoring social media very carefully because students tend to share things with each other. Um, there that we don't hear from unless we do. 
And a lot of the conversations have shown uh, the resilience of students that were very patient with us in the spring with the quick transformation of courses to online delivery and distance delivery that then evolved into concerns and questions about how long is this going to go and this is exhausting and you know being online all the time is not what I want to do and you know those kind of comments from students to now in the fall um, back towards um, kind of an attitude of acceptance that this is the way things are we're making the best of it and we're doing well and we're fine the students are finding ways to connect with one another connect with their professors and I wouldn't want to say getting used to everything being not everything but so much remote delivery but um, have become quite good at accommodating that uh, they do it very well and the quality of the courses that our faculty put together here have never been in question in my opinion um, we we had an outstanding number of faculty um, participate in quality matters national certified courses uh, we led the nate well not the not the nation i think we were 13th in the country in the number of quality matters accredited courses being delivered from this campus by faculty who are certified um, to do that which means those courses are highly interactive distance deliverable courses that have a huge um, impact on learning they're not just uh, stand in front of a camera and lecture so i think it's going quite well um, I wish, of course, we had more face opportunities for students. All right, our next question actually kind of ties into how, they, how they're doing in the classroom is kind of what we just talked about. Next is how are they doing as they try to get some real world experiences? Have they lost internships or how has COVID impacted their job searches and their internships uh, moving forward? In that? And I think the question is particularly directed toward those students from the St. Pete campus. I think Sri should probably yeah. weigh in on this. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm happy to start. start. Laurie, that's a great question. And and the reality is that, uh, you know, in spring, uh, when we shut down in, in, in March at that time, quite a few of our students were pursuing internships uh, and they had to, uh, you know, uh, to really kind of, uh, um, many of the uh, companies had shut down from face-to-face -face interaction, so they lost internships. So that was really, and what we're trying to do as companies are trying to reinvent themselves, um, we are also connecting with the companies to see how we can do remote internships. Uh, and now in a, in a where they're also doing hybrid, where occasionally they go in, uh, but largely it is, a, it is a remote internship. So we're starting to, I think, uh, as uh, you know, both what uh, Moes and, and Martin alluded to, um, the companies are also adapting and we are adapting to see how we can rebuild this internship. On the job placement side, that's going to, you know, that's become that uh, a little bit more of a challenge. As uh, more uncertainties are there, some of the companies have deferred um, the positions or, you know, where they had accepted students and um, as, uh, you know, to uh, the next semester. And I think some of the things that we're looking at is how can we, as um, alumni of our colleges, provide them with opportunities to continue to get some credentialing and support them. And I think Moes may be able to add some more to that. And, and, and um, so that's some of the things, opportunities, what we're looking at is that if they had a, defer, a deferment in placement, is there something we can provide so they can continue to earn and, and be credentialed in other things that they can do at, at a minimal cost or no cost so that we can continue to, you know, uh, to help them and support them? So that's where you know, we are at this point in time, but we're going to continue to make sure that uh, as alumni, um, we are going to support and provide all the support necessary in each of the campuses, uh, especially you know, in, the, in the St. Pete campus. Um, our uh, staff members are already reaching out to the alumni and providing the support. Absolutely. I will just uh, add a uh, uh, great, great job, uh, Sri. I will just uh, add that we are doing everything we can to move 
all of our events and activities that uh, is uh, that are related to job search and internship search and information sessions and preparing the resume and interviews online. Also for our students who graduated uh, and um, um, still looking for jobs, we're uh, offering them um, uh, to uh, to participate in our post crisis leadership certificate at uh, the major major uh, discount so to help them at least to retool and and keep um, on building their professional uh, skills and, and know how so um, and again if uh, you can open doors for us uh, we would always appreciate it because uh, we have great students and many of them are looking for internships and and for jobs well, that ties nicely into the next uh, uh, question here because jobs is one measure of student success, but someone's asking that one of the goals of consolidation was improve student success and they're asking for examples of efforts that you've seen move to the St. Pete campus as a result of consolidation. And I can give you a start off a Lori on that and I'll just give one example. I know both the Martin and uh, uh, Morris will add to that. Just to give you one of the things that we've always done is uh, tutoring um, in, in we have looked at, for example, uh, courses that are very, diff you know, the most difficult by looking at uh, grades of uh, where we call them, you know, students have received um, a D grade or failed in the class and really focused on and saying, how can we help them succeed by providing them tutoring services? Today in the world we live in, uh, we may move the tutoring to uh, online, a virtual platform, and we have a contract with a company called NAC. And previously we used to, you know, uh, each one of us had a separate way of providing the services, but now uh, our students are able to get the support of tutoring uh, remotely uh, for these courses. And, uh, you know, and it's uh, for any MUMA student that is able to participate across the campuses. And what's great about it is that, uh, you know, NAC also hires one of our, our own students who can provide tutors, you know, who can, uh, let's say, for example, it's an accounting, uh, a senior in an accounting, uh, be able to serve as a tutor and may be able to help somebody who is in a junior or a sophomore status taking the lower level courses. That's just one example. What we've also done is to continue with regard to other support services. Advising is a key component, how much yes. we have moved virtually. So I think uh, we made sure that not none of those are dropped. We are continuing to move it, but we have adapted it well and, and provide the services. Uh, why don't I pass it on to you, Moes? Maybe you can ask. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Sri. Um, in addition to what Sri uh, uh, said, now students in St. Pete and in Sarasota Amenity have access to all the advisors uh, that are in Tampa. They can uh, drop in. They can uh, uh, also um, uh, make an appointment. All of them are available. Them so they have access to more. Uh, also, all of the um, um, uh, events and and um, uh, professional development activities that I mentioned we're moving now um, virtually they are available for students in St. Pete, students in Sarasota Manatee but I think the most significant addition if uh, if uh, you really ask me is we had um, a couple of very significant um, and impactful alternatives or, or I'm sorry uh, initiatives in uh, in Tampa for our students before consolidation that are now available for um, all branch campuses um, students is um, every student uh, goes through a certification for career readiness. So we teamed up with Sanders Training that are leaders in, uh, in uh, uh, soft career skills. And now St. Pete students, they get that certification is part of their curriculum. And in addition to their degree in finance or in, in marketing or in accounting, they will have a certificate from Sandler training that they are career ready. In addition, we have been building at the MUMA College of Business an incredible strength in the area of big data and analytics. And um, before consolidation, every student at MUMA College of Business in Tampa is also certified by Tableau, a leader in this area, as a citizen data scientist. Guess what? Now every student of the MoMA College of Business in St. Pete, in Sarasota Amenity, and in Tampa um, will also be certified as a citizen data uh, scientist. So uh, think of um, um, when students from St. Pete graduates, 
they will have their degree in business finance or marketing or, uh, or management or analytics, but they also will have two certificates, one as career ready and the other one as um, citizen data scientists. So that hopefully will help them get a great job and succeed. Back to you, Laurie. You are on mute, Laurie. You're asking us not to be on mute and you put yourself on mute. <laughs> <laughs> For dachshunds. Um, this next question is the last one we have in the queue and it actually ties nicely because you've talked about the, the realities of consolidation that have come to fruition. But someone wants to know what are the opportunities that have yet to be realized? What are some of the things that are ahead and how can the community help move the college and its students forward? Let me start off and, and, and because there's a conversation today, I think um, that uh, um, so some of the opportunities, for example, one of our uh, uh, my advisory board members um, is talking with Bob Glazer from Smith and Associates. Uh, there is a real estate program in the finance you know, in the uh, department in Tampa. And um, so we've been talking about how we partner this and in, in, as we move forward. So the conversation, you know, I had uh, today a meeting with uh, one of the faculty, Greg Smirsch, and, and uh, one of the alumni that has really been a key student, um, Noah Schaefer, that was very instrumental in the student club moving forward. And we we're looking at and thinking about how can we create a program where we would serve the Tampa Bay community on the real estate side at the same time train better talent that can you know uh, find a, a placement in the Tampa Bay area. So that's just one small example of an opportunity to provide. The other side of it is that as Mo, you know, Mo West was talking about, uh, we have a you know a great relationship with Jable. We do a data scientist program. Um, it is a faculty from you know, uh, both of the campuses teaching the program. Uh, last time we hosted it here uh, because it made it easier for Jable folks to come to you know to St. Peter to take the course. Um, and so we're finding to you know, starting to see is that how do we leverage the faculty members? And one last example before I pass it on to both Mo West and Martin is that the Bishop Center is another great example. Uh, when last year, uh, you know, Martin and I had a conversation about how we want to strategically leverage the Bishop Center. Um, he said, Shri, you know, why don't you think about, you know, um, you know, taking that, taking this uh, responsibility of providing the strategic guidance. And I was very happy to do that. And I we had a conversation with uh, Moaz and he said, hey, I, we just hired a faculty member who is a scholar, a, a trust scholar, and, and his name is Tony Kong that's coming in. And so we were able to bring Tony uh, uh, Kong as the faculty director for the uh, uh, Bishop Center for Ethical Leadership. And uh, with him, we developed uh, a recently a model for um, trust-centered ethical leadership that we really are making grounding all of our programs based on that. We completed the model. We're getting some feedback from our advisory board and some of the other stakeholders. That's just again are, are the possibilities that we have and continue to build upon it. Uh, so that's just a few examples and I want to pass it on to Martin and Moes to you know, uh, provide additional examples. Martin, you want to go first? Yeah, yeah, I'll just say just a couple of short things. Um, you know, there's a lot of smart people <laughs> that work with colleges and universities and within colleges and universities. Um, when you're three separate universities, you tend to be in a competitive situation. Um, a lot of times you're not sharing um, a lot of things as much as you probably should. Um, you miss out on the synergy that can come from people with new ideas and new ways of thinking, even right here within the Tampa Bay region with three campuses. Um, you know, distance can mean a lot when you had separately accredited programs separately accredited campus campuses and now with things coming together there's a lot of opportunity and already has we've already experienced that a lot of opportunities to be much more innovative and to come up with many more creative solutions and ideas on how to meet the needs of people in the tampa bay region as a national university um, the conversations have changed there i'm seeing things emerge in those conversations that really elevate the thinking of people and I know I mean I've got two innovative deans sitting right here on this call that uh, value that highly and so the ideas and the thinking that are coming from the consolidation you just can't get when you are in separate buckets out there and in competition 
with one another for students and ideas and and uh, initiatives. So I just see this as something that really will make us more innovative, more creative, and bring new opportunities that we haven't been able to realize simply because we didn't talk to the extent we are now. Yeah, th thank you, Martin and, and Sri. Um, uh, also, if I understand the second part of the question is how can the community uh, uh, help, right, um, uh, Laurie? And um, let me tell you, we need your help. We really do. And, and this is uh, uh, the first thing that you can help us with. Spread the word about the amazing campus we have in St. Pete. Please help us. You are our ambassadors to tell people that consolidation after all is good. It is working for our students. It is working for our community. I know and for good reasons, many were skeptical before, but we can assure you here, we are a team. We are working together and together we're gonna uh, remove all the obstacles and we're starting to see the, the great things happening on three campuses because of consolidation. So that's the first thing we really need your help with. Also, when you see good students, really good students, please give them toward the St. Pete campus, preferably in business, but others it's okay <laughs> too, right? Martin, don't you have not heard that. But <laughs> but if they're really good, <laughs> yes, send them to. If they're not good, it's okay to send them to FSU and UF. But if they are good, bring them uh, to the uh, uh, St. Pete campus. We can assure you we will take good care of you, of, of, of these uh, students. And, and, on, and also, um, I think, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we need your help in these difficult times to open doors for us in, in companies so that they can hire our interns and our um, uh, graduates. That's really important more than ever before. And of course, if you really, really insist and you want to contribute financially, we will have no other option but to accept your donation. <laughs> I think that's very well said <laughs> um, and um, all I can tell you is that I think you know this is a, uh, a, an incredible community and um, uh, we're very grateful for all the partnerships and the support that everybody has provided. Um, you know, uh, Lori, if, if there, is there any other questions or should I be wrapping up as we get closer to six? I will let you wrap up, but we do have one final question here, which is probably part of your wrap up is what is success going to look like in three to five years as, as we move forward in consolidation? So maybe talk about your visions for the future as you wrap up here. I, I'll be happy to do so, but um, I wanted to make sure that if Martin and, and, and Moes have a, a few words, um, you know, to say, you know, that's a great way to g Absolutely. give your final thoughts. If you want to do that, then I'll, I'll finish up at the end. Uh, Martin, you want to give your final thoughts for that question? You bet. Um, in my opinion, we will have the academic programs available to students on this campus that we have not had and we have been asking for for the past five years. <laughs> Number great. one. Number two, every bed in our residential halls will be full. We yes. had a waiting list of 125 students two years ago. Um, we want to get past COVID. We want those beds full. And number three, um, we're going to draw on the reputation of USF and its academic programming to absolutely ramp up national visibility for things we offer in the Tampa Bay region, including those things that are going to be offered here on this campus to the residents of this county and to those who have easy access to this campus. Well, uh, yes, I, I will add my uh, my dream. My dream um, is that, uh, and I think it is really within reach, is that our um, um, wonderful campus in St. Pete becomes a magnet, true magnet for more, better, more diverse and inclusive uh, students. So that's the first thing. This, it's a long dream, so please um, bear with me um, because I, I have not slept for a long time because of the budget, so the dream will be very long. The second aspect of the dream is that when these students are admitted, they have to, to the St. Pete campus and the Muma Carlos on any other campus, they will have the 
best, absolutely the best educational experience that is productive, that will help them for their career and an amazing job at graduation with a very competitive salary. I underscore competitive salary because that will make the parents here very happy uh, in the area we train them in. And my to end up my dream is that when we admit these students and my the team here heard me uh, say this many times is we look them in the eyes and you said you come to St. Pete campus or Sarasota Amenity campus or Tampa campus. You do the things that we want you to do. And at the end, if you have you don't have a great job with a competitive salary, we'll pay back your tuition and never have to pay back any tuition. That's my dream. I told you it was long. That's all right. <laughs> and I will just cap it off by simply saying that again, it, it's been a, an amazing journey uh, and uh, looking at our key stakeholders. One clearly Martin and Moses talked about the students really making sure that we have a uh, great ex access to our students here, but also have a wonderful program that's relevant and places them very well and prepares them very well and places them very well. And secondly, also our commitment to the communities. Uh, we have been very engaged with the communities. Just a, two years ago, we had 120 plus events here uh, in, in we were hosting in our uh, in, in our campus. So I would love to see that come back where we are still working and partnering with all of you here across the Tampa Bay area and be continue to serve that. Um, with that said, so again, uh, we will continue to build upon it. We will have more of these sessions and we continue, you know, First of all, I want to just say thanks to all of you who participated in this. I appreciate you taking the time and joining us. And thanks to you know, uh, Region Chancellor Dr. Tadlock and Lim Pippen Jadeen Moes Lamayam. Thank you for joining us uh, for this Bulls Business Brief. Um, but none of this can happen without the support of a strong team. So I know I have a, a, a huge thanks to our advancement team. I just have a few names, so please bear with me. Um, you know, uh, Re uh, Region Vice Chancellor Deb Reed. We have a Gigi Han, Kate Wechter, Kate Sammy, Holly Duncan, and Melissa Bryson. Uh, thanks to all of you for everything you have done. And clearly, without uh, our marketing team, Lori Briggs and Sam. Uh, Fitzmaurice, I want to make sure. So thank you for all for your support, without which would, this would not be possible. Have a, a wonderful, wonderful evening and a very safe night. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sri. Thanks, uh, Martin. And thank you for all the people who attended with us tonight. Go Bulls. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Enjoy the evening. Thank you.